that. So my uh, QuickTime had uh, stopped itself. So here we go. So I just put a white layer mask on kids in the middle. Um, I'm going to use, a, I'm going to push the letter B to get a brush. Actually, I'm still in transformation mode. I'm going to push the letter B so I have a brush. I have 100% opacity and I have black paint selected. Um, you know that you can use your X, the letter X on your keyboard, to switch back and forth between white paint and black paint. But I want black paint because I want to paint off. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to paint away and cover up the garland that would be bleeding into the picture on either side. But what I also really want is for the garland to show through and I want her boot to show through. So and I'm going to add a layer mask, a white layer mask again to my grid lines. You can see the grid lines here are gone. There's a little bit of garland. And I'm going to again I'm going to just very carefully paint the garland in to um, the picture. I can see that I probably um, may have overshot how much garland I took away. I actually don't have enough garland. So what I'm going to do is go back into my kids picture. I'm going to make sure that I'm selecting kids in the middle, the photo, not the uh, mask. And I'm going to go back to my move tool and my I'm going to um, have a transformation tool open and I'm going to just make my picture slightly larger so that it covers the entire uh, grid line. And now I have a garland that would go over the entire grid line. Um, go back to my mask, take my paintbrush, and just paint off a little bit more of that extra garland that I just now added. I'm going to go back to my grid lines. See how I selected my grid lines? And I'm going to now paint the garland so that it comes through on the other side of my grid lines. And there you go. Now my grid lines are showing through. Now when I actually do this photograph for real, I do have a person on the left side and the right side of this, each side of this box, where there, there is garland that connects. So the illusion will be that there is garland that is going all the way through all three boxes. And that's how you create that illusion. You always have to be very cognizant about what you have clicked on the right hand side. Do you have your um, picture clicked? Picture are you on? So um, I'm going to want to do the same thing for her shoe. So I'm going to go back to my grid lines. And I'm, I have my black. Now I've already might have overshot it a little bit. I can undershoot it a little bit. And you can see actually that there's a little bit of the green left. Um, from the original picture. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. You could see that there's still a little bit of green left in this picture. I'm going to take away the grid line so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to also close the picture of Jared. Now, um, when you have more than one photo in your row three, the easiest way to do that is to just close the whole um, folder that has the bottom row three. I want to try to get rid of all the rest of the screen. So you can do that in a couple of different ways. First of all, I'm going to click onto the picture itself. I'm going to take um, a selection tool and I'm going to select out her shoe again. And then I'm going to go back to the mask with the black brush and I'm going to, no, I'm not going to do that because I was still now. I can always go backwards by doing uh, Command Z. Or I can go into my history and go back up one. So I have my quick selection. I'm going back into the mask and I'm pushing B to get myself back to my brush tool. And I'm going to just paint out the rest of the green. I overdid it a little bit. All I need to do, I'm going to um, make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to press my X so it's white. And I'm going to again a little bit because I did overpaint. And now I'm going to go back again and just do it so I can get all the green out. I'm going to press Command D and that takes away my, my little lines, my little jumping ants. The other thing you can do is just in your grid, I mean, in your... Um, in your mask with black selected. I'm just going to go very carefully 
around the shoe. You didn't really even need to select it out, but it's one way of showing you. And I have now gotten rid of all of the green that was there. I'm going to bring my grid lines back. I'm going to go back up to the mask on my grid line, and I'm going to make sure that her shoe is completely not painted in. You can go back and refine later on, of course. So I'm going to bring the picture of my bottom row back in so you can see that her shoe is now um, back in the picture. I might not have it all, and s uh, but these are the kind of the small refinements that you make. I'm going to click on Jared pushing up. I'm going to click on my move tool. And I'm going to move my picture up a little bit. And I'm just going to refine this picture. I'm going to um, refine this picture a little bit. So I want to turn it a little bit. I'm going to take pushing my shift button at the same time as I drag the picture into the corners, into the sides. I want to make sure that Jared looking up. Jared pushing up is under, is a layer of kids in the middle, so that way her foot will absolutely go under, uh, over this layer to make it look more realistic. Um, some fine tuning that I probably will not do in this video for the sake of time, but I'm giving you a, a sense of how it works. Um, if you need to warp this, maybe you need to bring this one side just in a little bit. I'm going to use um, my control, no, not control, uh, my command key. As I push on just one side, I'm pushing my command key, and that will warp the layer just a little bit. If I need to just bring in one side or another, I use this very gently. I do not use it too much because you don't want anyone to look completely warped. I'm going to press here. Now you can see that um, kids, the middle layer, there's actually a little bit of overlap that's still going on here. So what I'm going to go do is go back to my white layer, make sure I have my paintbrush selected to black, and I'm going to paint off the rest of this layer that I didn't realize was there. And that way it cleans up the edges a little bit. Now I, I kind of went into her foot a little bit more than I should have. These are the kind of refinements that I would go back in and change. I'm going to go back up to my grid lines, paint her shoe in even better through the grid lines, go back into the kids in the middle. This is where you start, whoops, control. This is where command Z comes into place. I'm going to press X, make it white, and make sure that I paint back out what I didn't mean to let you see. Whoops. And you have to play with it the way you want it. Just keep going back and forth between your black. Now, her shoe was not really cut out fabulously well. I would probably go back and refine that. But I want to show you one more little thing. All right. So, um, going to go backwards a little bit. So her shoe is not I I'm her shoe's not exactly the way I would have done it, but for this demonstration it's it's pretty good. You're getting a sense. But if you have a shoe or a leg or a foot that is overhanging, you really want to make sure you have a shadow. So, I am clicking on the kids in the middle. I am on the layer itself, not the um, layer mask. I'm going to go into um, bear with me. I haven't done this in a while. Edit, um, oh, no, I'm sorry. So what I want to do is I want to, I'm in the layer itself. I want to double click on the layer itself, and that brings me into layer style. On the left-hand side, you could see here that it says drop shadow. I want to go down and click drop shadow, and I also want to open it. And for the sake of, um, and what that does is that will bring a shadow into that photo. Okay, so I might have a shadow that, I'm just illustrating this to you, I'm pushing on distance, that shows you how big the shadow is, all right, um, the angle, 
We'll turn it. You want to think about where your light is source is coming from. So what, what angle do you want your shadow to be at? How big is the spread? You play with all of this, all of these. All right, my angle is... Now I've changed my angle so that I have my shadow coming out just like all my other shadows. All right. And um, you can play with your size. Here we have an, even a little bit more of a shadow putting a shadow around some other pieces of the layer that was there. Um, but don't worry about that right now. So I'm going to say OK. Let's just say that we have our shadow here. Say OK. And now this is the cool thing. Make sure you're still on the uh, photo itself. You're going to go into Image. No, you're going to go into Edit. And then, no, I'm sorry. You're going to go into Image, Adjustments. And I have to find it again. 